All right, fine, you guys made me do it. I don't really practice one hand anymore, but I'm still sub 20 and here's a one-handed dips video. Number one, wide moves. Finger tricks are really important because we want to avoid regrips because they take a long time. So for example, if three of your cross is done, the last one needs to go in here, then you can do it like this. Wide R, U prime, wide R prime. And especially during the cross, there are a lot of times you can use wide moves to avoid regrips. So for this cross, we have the cross pieces here, 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 here. And what you could do is insert red here so that blue goes in the back here, but green over here so that solves these three, and then just insert orange last. So for the first move, inserting red, we actually have two ways we can do it. We can either do it with some sort of L move, or we can do it with a wide R move. And in this case, I think the wide R move is actually better because it saves a regrip. So how I would do it is like this, wide R, and then insert blue, insert green, and then insert orange over here. And lastly, anytime you're aligning the cross, you could do D turns or you could do wide turns, which could actually help to avoid a rotation on your very first pair. So here we have this pair, and I talk about edge orientation in this video that I'll link up here, but the front is green and the side color, one of them is green, which means this is oriented. And so we don't wanna change the position of the centers. So in that case, we'll do a D move. Now I can insert this one without rotating. But instead, if I had done a wide U, then I would have to rotate to insert this pair. However, if it's a similar case where this time orange doesn't match the side centers, so this is unoriented, then I actually would prefer to do a wide move. That way I can insert it without a rotation. Wide moves are kind of hard to think about, but you just have to remember that if you're trying to do a certain turn, that's how I usually think about it first, then I have the option of doing a wide move the other way, and I just see if that helps. And to practice this, you should think about it during inspection, and for different cross cases, see if wide moves would help you out. Number two, one-handed look ahead. For F2L look ahead for one hand, it's actually a little bit different. And that's, so let's look at this case. Um, if we're inserting this into the back, normally we could do it like this and look anywhere on the cube we want during that. But for one-handed, for this case, you'd hold it on the side and do it like this. And if you're not used to this, it can be really hard to look ahead. However, because one-handed turns are slower, you also have an advantage where you get more time to look around the cube. So when you get cases like this and have to tilt the cube, you should not accept that look ahead is bad because you're turning slower. So you have to make up for it somehow with better look ahead. So in this case, what you could do is look around in the top, although I do kind of know that there's nothing good in the top. So you still have to make an effort to tilt the cube and look in other places. You won't be able to tilt the cube quite as much, but you can still kind of get a glance at colors like this green sticker back here. So by doing that and having more time during this case to look at the top and realize that red green is not anywhere here, it must be this one. So even though look ahead is harder because it's harder to tilt the cube, I actually did have more time to make deductions. And that's something you don't get to do a lot in two hands because you're turning faster and it's harder to do these really quickly. Now I can just take this one out and then do this one and this one. Number three, one-handed F2L efficiency. Another thing you could do to reduce rotations is to do rotationless cases first. If I do the orange-blue case first, this requires a rotation. So I'll pair them up like that. And then if I insert this, then I'm going to do another rotation to solve this one. So that's two rotations. So because you're turning slower and you have more time, you should try to find times where you can solve a better case rather than solving the first case that you see. Here we have this corner and this edge. And if I match them up together like this, then, well, this doesn't really count as a rotation to go sideways. But if I do that first, then I'm left with this and this. And that's one rotation in order to solve both of these cases. So because you're turning slower and have more time, then if you see two F12 cases, then you should usually solve the better one first rather than solving the one you see first. So in order to reduce cube rotations, you have to know how to solve every case in one or zero cube rotations. Now this means for a lot of F12 cases, you'll have to know multiple ways to solve it. For the blue-red pair here, so in this case with the back pair solved, I think what a lot of people tend to do is do it like this, which for two hands, it doesn't waste that much time. It's still not the best way to do it. But for one hand, it's a huge problem to rotate and do stuff like that. Instead, you have to know different ways to solve this. And one of the ways you could do it is by hiding the corner back here. So hide it like that, move the edge over, and that pairs them up. Another way you could do it is by putting the edge here and hiding the edge first, and then inserting like that. So this case going into this slot, commonly how people do it is by pairing it up like this, and then inserting like that. So that's fine if you're already facing orange or, or even red because you can do it as back slot. But if you're facing green or blue, then you have to do a cube rotation followed by another cube rotation. So that's why you have to know two ways to solve this case. And if you're facing green or blue, you could take it out like that and then you can insert it. Um, and of course, if you're facing green, you could do it from the back like this. Or even another way, if the corner's over here, you can do R prime U two R and that also sets it up. Another way to avoid regrips is by changing the way you do F12 cases. For this case, if I have orange on the front, how I like to do this case is like this. So if I did that for one hand, that would look like this. So even though there's no rotations there, there's a lot more regrips. So what you could do instead is just do this. 
and then that sets it up into a one rotation case, which really just means one regrip. Even though I usually don't really practice one hand, when fast people upload solve videos, you should watch them. So this is a trick I randomly learned watching Felix, and it's when you have this pair, and then instead of doing it like this, and then Q rotate to insert, then what you could do is R U R prime like this. So that isn't always the best way to do R U R prime, unless you're about to set up into a finger trick, which is like this, do Y D, and then now you can insert this, and that basically saves a Q rotation. So again, with rotating, that would look like this, and then the new way, so this one's kind of a bonus tip. You have to be capable of turning really, really fast. And what you're seeing here is two gen scrambles, trying to do that fast, followed by two gen solves. And two gen just means only using R and U moves, which means that I don't have to do cube rotations or regrips. And this forces me to turn really fast and build muscles for turning fast. So besides this, to make your turn speed better on any puzzle, I recommend just picking it up randomly when you're doing whatever and just do a bunch of turns, maybe for PLL, and that will make your PLLs a lot better. And for one hand, this is really important because for cases like U perm and J perm versus ones that people tend not to be good at, like G perm or A perm or N perm, what case you get could make a big difference in your solves unless you're really, really good at all the PLLs. So I hope you learned something new and leave a comment if you have any video requests. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.